thing that I just cannot wrap my head around are the people that are celebrating this whole situation with Trump. How are you not terrified that our own government's justice system is being weaponized against the American people? If they can do this to a former president of the United States, what do you think they're gonna do to you? Hey, welcome back. It's your man, Wise. Oh man, this young lady right here speaks nothing but facts. This young lady right here is a testament to what's going on around the country. Yes, you're starting to see a lot of black people, especially black men, move away from the Democrat Party. You're starting to see some older black men move away from the Democrat Party. Now we're starting to see younger women move away from the Democrat Party. Now you had a lot of people that decided to abstain from the 2020 election because they didn't know enough to make an informed decision. And that's just so unfortunate because with everything that's going on, we know that elections have consequences and we've got an opportunity to see how this administration's policies are tearing our nation down from the inside out. We have an invasion at the border. They have all these woke policies. You look at what's going on out in California and they're raising minimum wage and people are losing jobs. We have massive layoffs going on all across the country. No one wants to talk about it. It's a mess. And then we have a president that is glitching right in front of our eyes. And now they're telling us that what you're seeing isn't real. These are cheap fakes or deep fakes. I don't really understand what any of that means. But basically what they're telling you is two plus two equals five. That's what they're telling you. Two plus two equals five. Now, you know it equals four, but they want to tell you and get you to believe that two plus two equals five. If they can get enough people to believe that, they know that they got you and they know that they have this country. And at that point, they know that they can tell you anything and you'll believe it. I am so glad to see not just black men, I'm starting to see some black women, but I'm also starting to see some of the younger women who four years ago, you wouldn't have heard this type of rhetoric coming out of their mouths. Before we get into the video, like, share, subscribe to the channel, drop me a comment down below. I appreciate all the love and support. And without further ado, let's go. One thing that I just cannot wrap my head around are the people that are celebrating this whole situation with Trump. How are you not terrified that our own government's justice system is being weaponized against the American people? If they can do this to a former president of the United States, what do you think they're gonna do to you? Are you genuinely that happy with how these past four years have been going? What is it that the Biden administration has done that has made you so blind to the corruption? I know it's not forgiving your student loans because that never happened. Oh, you know what, maybe it's raising minimum wage. But now tell me about the tens of thousands of jobs that people are losing because companies cannot afford to pay that. Oh, maybe it's him ending systematic racism. Maybe he's weaponizing your skin color against you for his own political gain, playing you like a chess game. He's gotten so good at convincing you that you need to be victimized in order to survive in today's society because of your skin color. Maybe you just love living with your parents so you don't even think about rent or house payments. Oh, maybe it's that he's made America a whole lot safer. How much gas costs to get to work. Let's not even bring up foreign affairs. Well, you know, it's good that Trump was found guilty because the American people deserve to know. You want to talk about the American people deserving to know? Let's talk about how we deserve to know what was on all of Hillary's emails that she deleted. Or what about how we deserve to know who was listening? Why our very own government tried so hard to cover that up? But somehow we spend all of our time digging into Trump's past. Do you guys also know that the judge who found Trump guilty has also donated to the Biden campaign and told the judge that they don't need to decide unanimously if they think Trump is guilty. I don't care if what Trump has posted has hurt your feelings. We are not voting for someone's personality. But if this entire situation has not opened your eyes to a whole new level of corruption, you're too far gone. Genuinely want you to consider how these past four years have been going for American citizens under the Biden administration and how it was under Trump. I want you to take away every promise that Biden has ever made to you and think about what he's actually done. Cannot make the same mistake that you made in November of 2020. She is 100% right. Where was the lie? Did she tell one single lie in her diatribe? One. I didn't hear one. I didn't hear one. I have a clip here to share with you from Steven Crowder. Uh, he's out in the streets talking to people. He interviews these young women and hear what they have to say about the comparison of the Biden administration to the Trump administration. Check this out. So I just, I didn't have... Would yeah. you say a reason maybe that you're voting for Trump this time? And I know you're undecided and you're undecided, but even considering it, 
is because of the contrast, where like you said, the economy was booming, like you lived under a term of Trump. And for any of the negatives, you see the difference economically and mm -hmm. now you have Biden. Like, do you think yep. that's something that maybe hasn't happened in your lifetime where you go, there's a noticeable change? Yeah, I mean, we bought our house on that interest rate is like 3%. Yep. And I was making a ton of money and things were good. I was living the life and now I'm not. So that right. definitely hurts you when you're able to provide a certain life for your family and then it gets taken away because interest rates are higher because you know of the interest rates it's like a domino effect on everything uh -huh. everybody's livelihood our people are millennials so people in our generation are stuck with what the boomers did and the generations after us and their decisions are still overpowering our lives right yeah so you feel like maybe you don't have a voice in that right. as much. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and uh, also uh, don't count on that social security check when you reach that age. Right, right. They're saying the boomers. 70 oh years old. Goodness. They're going to run out yeah. in like 10 years. They're trying to right. raise the retirement age for us, and they're saying the boomers are going to basically take it all. So There's a good chance that it won't be around, or at least not right. in its current capacity. So I would advise uh, saving yourself in a different portfolio than relying on social security. That's oh correct. God. And we did learn that in school recently, that it's projected that we won't get our social security because the boomers, yeah. such a large population, retiring. So the one thing it sounds like that makes you a little bit hesitant is because of uh, what you saw as social unrest under Donald Trump. Yes, I just don't like the hatred and the anger and the lack for care of the environment because sure, gas and oil are great. We have diesel trucks and a million dirt bikes at home. But our clean water, is not something that we can continue to risk. Pipelines can be rerouted to areas that don't run over fresh water. Uh -huh. That's the big thing. Why don't you just put the pipelines somewhere else away from our fresh water sources? So the, the lack of care for the environment it also is what makes me worried. Yeah, take it up with uh, this one. Take it up with your friend because she works in private private air travel. <laughs> I'll be honest, it's not. Sometimes we drop people off in Cabo and we have to fly all the way back and then just to fly back to pick them up. So it's yeah. not, honestly not like I'm environmental. I fly a lot. I go on cruises. I realize that uh, gas and oil are important, but the way that we're doing it can be improved. Yeah. We don't have to run these pipelines near our freshwater sources, and that's my biggest problem. Right. Isn't there a rumor of electric airplane? Any I think so. I don't know. They're, uh, said maybe they're not really super time. effective at this point. There are electric okay. drones that can kind of yeah. fit to or more like a, uh, more like air cabs. Yeah. As you can see, even these young women right here are feeling the pinch of this economy. And what's more important to you? She mentioned the low interest rate. She was able to purchase a home during that time frame. I know a lot of people that did that as well. I know a lot of people that refinanced their homes and received, uh, you know, under 3% interest rates on refis. I mean, the I know people whose you know 401k was booming during that time frame. Investment portfolios were booming during that time frame. I know people who started businesses. I'm just saying, right now, I don't know too many people starting businesses in this in this climate. I don't know too many people. I do know folks that started businesses uh, back during the Trump administration whose businesses are no longer operational right now. And then you add in the wokeness that's going on, the men in women's sports. It's never the opposite. I can't think of a situation to where there is a, a woman who, you know, identifies as a man that's going into men's sports and dominating. It's not happening. But we see a lot of the opposite of that. It's sad, you know, where we are right now. But I will say this. We're in a situation where we have millennials are struggling big time, kind of like what they mentioned, you know, with Social Security probably won't be around for a lot of us. We have a lot of people that have jobs, but have to stay at home with parents or they're rooming it with three or four people right now. I know a few of those people, no prospects of owning a home or even staying on their own. One bedroom apartments are two and three thousand dollars a month in a lot of places. So when you look at what's going on, Look at the economy. You look at how the mainstream liberal media continues to cover for this administration. You look at the violence that is being uh, perpetuated by these illegal immigrants that have come over the border over the past three years. Crime is up in almost every major city out there. In every sanctuary city, crime is definitely up. 
there was just a situation recently uh, where these guys, I guess, attacked a police officer. We've seen it up in New York City where, you know, these guys jumped on a police officer. We didn't see these types of things happening during the Trump administration. Now, that's not to say that we didn't have some social unrest there, but that didn't necessarily have anything to do with President Donald Trump and his administration directly. These are situations that happen throughout different cities in the country. Typically, those cities were liberal-led cities. We know what happened out in Baltimore. I believe that was during the Obama administration. But we know what happened up in Milwaukee. We know, you know, the situations that have happened out in Chicago. Uh, we know the situation that happened, you know, down in Memphis. We've had some unfortunate acts of violence that has happened. Uh, and those acts of violence, uh, the situation that happened up in Minneapolis, which another liberal-led town, city, they tried to blame that and put that on President Donald Trump. But how? These are liberal-led cities. Larry Elder spoke about it yeah, uh, when he was on his uh, interview or in his interview with the Breakfast Club. And he was talking about Baltimore City and the Freddie Gray. Everybody in Baltimore is black and liberal that has any position of power. From the mayor, chief of police, these are all black people. Some kind of way they tried to make that some form of you know white supremacy and hate. I just don't understand the correlation there. But I'm glad to see that now... Young women are seeing this, they're speaking up about it, and they're starting to make a decision about the political affiliation that they've been a part of. How important to you is women rights in comparison to the economy where you just can't survive? How important is it? You have a choice to live in any state that you want to live in. So if that is an important piece of legislation for you, move to the states that have implemented those things. The state that I live in, heck, we, our governor, you know, signed into law, pregnancy terminations up to nine months. I think it's ridiculous, but I live in a state. It is what it is. I don't like it. I have to move. And I appreciate what has happened. We've kicked things back to the states. Now, I don't like the governor signing executive orders on things like that. I think the people should have a say. We live in a state. We pay our taxes here. We should have a say. We should get a vote. It should be on the ballot and we should get an opportunity to vote on it. But I don't have any issue with that. And if that issue for you is a, a hard line issue, make sure that you vote in the local elections in your state and get your point across, get your say. And if for whatever reason it doesn't pass, you have the ability or the option to move to another state. But allowing these people to continue doing what they're doing, to continue implementing the policies that they're implementing, you're not going to be able to move anywhere. You're not going to be able to do anything. These people are basically telling you, you will own nothing, you will have nothing, and you will be happy about it. That's what the Democrat Party is telling you. Let me know what you guys think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Drop me a comment down below. I appreciate all the love and support. Consider joining the ARP family. It supports the team. It supports me. It supports the channel. Help us continue to grow and to push this type of content out to those who really need to see it. I appreciate each and every one of you guys that have already joined the ARP family. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. God bless each and every one of you guys. Keep God first in your life. Stay prayed up and I'm going to catch up with you all next time. Peace.